Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi Walaikum as salam wa Do we learn the seven names one by one or does it open all together after constant effort? No, it's a, it's a process like everything else. If you play video games, you have to go through each level. We said before the concept of a video game, it's a deep reality that you shouldn't be playing video games. But if you do play a video game, you understand that it's, it's one engine, for those who don't know programming, it's just one room. The scenario changes, the scenery changes in the room and you have a mission on each level. There's a door in, there's a, a fake door and then there's a real door out to get to your next level. But in that level you have to accomplish whatever Allah wanted you to accomplish. You got all the prizes, you got all the hidden gems, you got all the coins, you got everything of what that game wanted for you so you can go to the next level. Otherwise the next level there's some sort of a creature there that's going to fight you and oh you don't have your potion, you don't have your asa, you don't have your ring, whatever it is that your game is playing means it's an allergy that how are you going to get to anywhere when you didn't do level by level by level by level? So it's not that I just want this, the name of my seventh level and I'm going straight to the top. It's about what we just described the whole process. Did you conquer the bad character? Have you been tested to get angry and you control yourself? Have you tested with all of the, the bad desires and you control yourself? Are you able to make your connection to connect with the shaykh, the fires and the light of the shaykh to enter into your heart? All of those that you're doing as you're progressing you're getting closer. So I want to know myself but between me and myself are all my bad desires, all my shaykhs are blocking all these veils of these realities blocking for me. How could I get to know me if I, if I haven't gone through all of those? You can't detour them and push them aside and escape and make a goal. You have to go through the whole team of all these demons and all these shaitans that you've built over your years of, of bad character, bad desires, bad way of talking, bad everything. Those all have to be beaten up, you go after them, boom, 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 boom like a football game. You have to take them out, take them out, take them out. As you've taken them out, now you're closer to meeting yourself. And that's just the level one, you meet the self that is on this dunya and what that name was and what was the reality of that name. That now that you meet that self they begin to inspire to you the name of that self and it's, it's reality. And then as you go deeper again, deeper into your reality, you're making lots of tafakkur, lots of contemplation, lots of connection with the shaykh go deeper and deeper into your reality and then it begin to tell you your second name. So it's, it's, a, it's a, a journey to the Lord of power, it's not that you just be here seven names and see what you can do with them. It's in the veil of unveiling yourself. Each one you're going to peel a layer off of your reality and get to know now this new reality, this new name, this new person. It's seven paradises, you're going to move into each of those paradises to know that name is dress and it's reality. So that's why they're telling you these are very lofty stations, these are not something easily achieved and these are rarely achieved. They're telling you these things for you to understand who you're dealing with. It's not that you're going to get them because it's not, it's not an easy place to, to get these things. But to be with those who know themselves, know their names, know their place in all, in all of these realities, this is the reality of guidance. And that's why so many people are talking, so many people are stating and this and that, my shaykh is this, I was like this, shaykh was like this, like this, okay, that, that's different, it's not the same. These realities that are coming to you, these are based on those who know themselves in that presence. They know those names, they know their reality and they know what that reality serves. So we struggle and strive to be from those people. So that's a lifelong process, it's not some seven names will be given to you and you hit the lottery ticket.
As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum Salaam Wa Rahmatullah If we know what we should do but the inner motivation is missing, how do we motivate ourselves? Yeah, I'm not hearing on the on the headphones. I realized that I'm hearing you from the the pad, but not on my uh, headphones. Yeah, I'm not hearing. All this time I'm just wearing a headphone and I'm just talking through the, the iPad. <laughs> We'll get to that question right now. What was the question again, say? If we know what we should do but the inner motivation is missing, how do we motivate ourselves? If we know what we should do but the inner desire is missing how to motivate oneself, that is the, the great struggle that uh, when Prophet is describing to holy companions that we left the outer fight for the greatest fight which is the inner fight. Outer fight is, is the easy one. When you fight to go and work and take care of yourself, you like it because, oh I'm getting paid. You get a paycheck, you go get a car, you get some goods, this is your outer jihad. You get up every morning and go get some work and say, I'm working hard but you really like it because you're getting paid and it satisfies your nafs. So that was one reality when Prophet is describing now to the companions, there is no reward. This is the greatest battle is the fight inside. And that's why it's such a… for Prophet to say this to holy companions, uh, you're talking about a scale in the millions of… Uh, from if it's 1 to 0 or 1 to 10 is difficulty, this is 1 to a million in difficulty because there's no reward, there's no paycheck, you actually have to give your paycheck to them. The, anything you have you start to diminish. You have to start to sacrifice, you have to start to give, you have to start to work hard against the self. It's not easy, it's very difficult when to come against yourself, to come against your character, to come against you know yelling at somebody, backbiting at somebody, defending yourself with your, your tongue and with, with whatever emotions you're used to doing. All of those things are immensely difficulty, so to even think that they weren't then you've underestimated the battle. So how to motivate yourself is by listening to the zikrs to keep yourself connected and recharged, to do your salawats throughout the day, to stick to your, your awrad and your connection, that making your connection that your light enter into my heart and the making Asha Allah Shaykh Muhammad so astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Doing your daily awrad so that you're not disconnected from the network. We have a talks on that like a Wi-Fi, you have to keep logged in every day because shaitans are all around you, whipping you around trying to get you to log off of the network. If you log off for just one day it's as if 30 days of darkness will come upon you. You cannot log off for even one day, say, oh but I was here and I was around holy people, it doesn't matter, you're, you're giving your bad character an excuse. As soon as you log off you're going to lose a connection with them and then it becomes that much harder to reconnect. So those whom are steadfast in their practices, it's not somebody emailing and saying, Jake I want to go from thousand to the steadfast level of zikr of five thousand because everyone wants to say, I'm at that higher level. <laughs> the steadfast is the one for years always does their awrad and they don't miss it for a day and they do it every day religiously like a lifeline, like a life support. They connect and they make their awrad, they keep their connection and now throughout the day they have like a life support connected from their heart into Divine the Presence. It's not a matter you feel good, I want to now increase it to 5,000 but to be firm and istiqam fi tariqat is to have firmness on your tariqah, keeping your practices, doing your salawats, logging into the, the connection, keeping the connection. You know the live zikr is very powerful, you put on headphones, you, 
lock yourself out from everybody, you can listen to it on your headphones while the family watches it on, on the, the screen, casting it on YouTube. So you do all these things to keep yourself connected with this energy knowing that shaitans are coming like ifrits in a million just blowing around trying to get everybody to disconnect, disconnect. And if you're… if they're able to get you to disconnect they begin to feed on top of you and lock on all over the servant because now they're disconnected from a powerful source of energy that pushes away and that's the… that's the madad. All that fires and madad that reaching to these people is pushing away all of these shayateen. So they have every interest in destroying that connection with the… like the astronaut to the ship. You know the awliya are like the mother ship and everyone's on this tether and the astronauts are in space like floating around. Have you seen that, that movie? I think the guys use it as a clip. You're, you were locked on to this ship, I means the, the ultimate Furq al-Mashhoon, the big ship is the soul of Sayyidina Muhammad We're all tethered on to this and the great abyss is everywhere, every darkness is around us. You think you disconnect from the heart of Prophet is, is, is what is there? It's just the darkness of, of non-existence. So they have every interest in cutting that connection. And mithlhum and khalaqnahum mithlhum and we created those whom are like the fuluqul mashqoon, they come out as smaller ships to catch people. And people are tethered on to the smaller ship, the smaller ship is locked on to the big ship and going around and bringing people to that reality. So shaitan wants to come and take that connection and disconnect it. As soon as the person is disconnected they are in a… In an ocean of difficulty because to reconnect then becomes that much harder, that much more difficult. Assalamu uh, alaikum, dearest Sayyidi. Wa alaikum as salam wa Thank you for everything. In one broadcast, you said we have to be social and not to escape social duties, but mm -hmm. after you said we should not interact with people. Could you please clarify how to find a balance? Thank you in advance for your answer. May Allah bless you eternally. InshaAllah. I think the, the, the references are, are a little bit more broader than one time I said don't be and next time I said to be. <laughs> to not be social where people who hear the teachings and then hide from everything. That everyone is scary, everybody's bad energy is, is scary and I'm going to isolate myself to be uh, connected and do my practices. And no, they have families, they have children, they have work and this is about uh, seclusion amongst people. To know the bad, to know the good, to connect with the good and go out and do what you have to do for your survival, for your family, all of those social obligations, parents. You do what you do, you don't… we're not a people who hide in a closet and, and trying to run away from the world. We go everywhere, face everyone, do whatever we have to do but knowing bad energy and good energy and I have to keep my good energy, I come home, I wash, I make wudu, if it was the mall I try to shower to get all the bad energy off. Everything is in a balance, we are balanced middle way people. We don't go left, we don't go right. So when we say socialize doesn't mean now tomorrow every day I go to the mall, I go spending and shopping and doing all sorts of ridiculous things because Shaykh said to go out, no. It was to keep a balanced way in which to entertain the family, entertain people, sit with relatives, sit with the people, do your work, go for work and everything in our life to be balanced inshaAllah. And we're not hiding and scared of things. These teachings are not meant to make people scared, it's meant to motivate you that there are devils out there, you should be connecting with the heavenly lights. And there are waves of difficulty coming and you should be connecting with heavenly lights, you should have your ta'weez, you should have your associations. Stay away from Wahhabis, don't enter into debates with Wahhabis. That we have emails that, oh my, my cousin is a good friend of mine but they say, no this, no this, no that. If they're saying, no, 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 they're Wahhabi run. 
and say, no, 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 there's a Wahhabi, run, don't, don't say, I'm going to sit with them until they take away your faith. Dajjal come to take away your faith brick by brick, you know, it doesn't take it in one shot. Dajjal sends the Wahhabi, is, they are his Dajjal, his Shaitan, they come, these people from the Dajjal. They're not coming from paradise, they're coming from the places of Jahannam and they're going to teach a religion and if you follow that it will make your way into Jahannam. And if they tell you, oh these practices will take you to Jahannam, know that it's paradise. Prophet described these people and this, this way of Dajjal. Dajjal not coming uh, for Christian people. The, the Muslim Dajjal, the Muslim one whom's coming to create deceit is going to create deceit within Islam. The Christian one will create deceit within Christianity, Judaism, each to their own religion they'll have an immense deceit and lie. So we already know which one is a Hizb shaitan So when you say, oh this one's a Hizb Mawlid is no good, run from them. You're wasting your life even trying to talk with this person, they'll take your faith away. In, in two words you'll have a shock and a doubt. So just say, I don't want to talk to you about religion. You froze, we can't hear you. So that they're… It's cut off, see. No. That reality is danger. It's back. Shaitan angry, huh? You cut the television? <laughs> Are we back? Yeah. It's back. It's back, Sayyidi. Auzubillah. Auzubillah min shaitan rajeem. But they don't understand the danger of this, Shaykh. Um, all our life and our training was just this, just this group of people. And dealing with them and them coming after us and trying to, to, to beat us up and to… You know, they're crazy, crazy, crazy people. And if you have one in your relatives just, you know, stay silent, put a rock in your mouth, say, I don't want to talk about religion with you, let's just keep family relations and that's it. But these people whom you debate with about deen, uh, don't, don't ever think you're going to out-clever a devil. Some way he's going to just pull pull the faith out of the heart of the person. And that's when a shaykh asked his student that, how do you know if you know you're, you're safe from shaitan? And one student says, oh if the shaitan come and throw something at him, then another person says, if shaitan comes up in like this. And he said, no you're already locked with the shaitan because you're interacting with him. He's coming, you're playing with him, I'm going to spit, I'm going to do like this. No, the one whom is safe from shaitan is completely ignoring the shaitan. Has nothing to do with them, doesn't want anything to, to, to interact with them, just block. So on our channel they come all the time, make comments, they want to engage so that to confuse the whole audience. No, no, just block, you've been put in time out and blocked. There's no need to discuss, debate, nothing. To you, your religion and to our, our religion, inshaAllah. Uh, As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Is there concern for these daily practices becoming addictions like video games or social media? What was that? Like, uh, like addictions like video games or social media, is there a concern about it? About become addicted to the games? Yeah. No, definitely I think that uh, it's all addictive and it's all very dangerous for people. The children that… Uh, older children too, oh, everyone's playing the video games that they can't leave, they, they're just obsessed by them and they live in a world of those video games and don't want to live in the real world. And social media, yeah they have… You know, Western people have made scientific videos of how dangerous they are and how, how they've changed the whole culture of children. and. Uh, people don't have any more social skills, the ability to interact with the human contact and to discuss and to talk. Everybody very angry and, and very quick with their fingers and, and typing. So yeah, it's, it's devastating. But this is a sign from the fact that we are on the, the way of the, the Dajjal and the end of the world, al akhir zaman that the, the world is in a final phase. These are all of the corruptions of the last days.
when humans don't act human anymore and they said 90% of, of humans are not really human anymore, something else is, is occupying them and they have given themselves to something else and that's why they don't e exhibit the signs of humanity. You know they don't feel remorse when they see the dead, they don't feel remorse when they see humanity when people are hungry or people are starving or, or people are in pieces. These people don't feel any remorse, anything as if their hearts are no longer human hearts. These are all the signs of the last days that we're living in it, we're seeing it. You can read a hadith and then you're looking in the news and, and you see it. These are the, the fitna, you can't, you can't move within this fitna and Prophet described that a dark fitna will come like a dark, dark darkness, the one sitting is better than the one standing. Means what? Don't go into these parades, don't go into these protests, these are like waves of fitna hitting the streets and shaitan want you to think it's something good. What are you talking about? That's like a tsunami of difficulty. If you sit it's better than to stand and if you stand it's, it's better than if you start walking means you're entering in now into these fitnas. And uh, fitna will be everywhere, every type of difficulty will be everywhere. So every holy hadith of Sayyidina Muhammad is all appearing. And that's why the focus so much on the tariqah is then khuluq, khuluq. Make yourself to have the best of character so that Allah's rahmah upon you. Good character Allah loves you. He doesn't need to smack you to get you back in shape. Say, Ya Rabbi I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Please no, no, because you smack yourself, you take care of yourself, you put your own nafs down, you put your, your good character, good character means it's very rough on you because other people may be exhibiting bad character to you. So you just stay good, stay good, stay good because if Allah's hand comes in then Allah save, save us from Allah's hand inshaAllah. That's what Prophet was describing, don't let Allah to, to begin punishment and judgment. That we're seeking refuge in Allah from every, every fitna of shaitan that will bring Allah's qadab and anger upon humanity. So then awliyaullah inspiring, have good character, have good character. So that you know shaitan not playing with us and Allah wanting to punish us. So that's what safety in the last days is the good character, the love of Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. As Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam it's good there was no question. <laughs> what is the remedy for an excessive desire to control and lead others? To be a shaykh <laughs> 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 no, that's just… Uh, that's all a part of the characters that we're talking about. That you, you can't give what you don't have. So the, the, those whom are shaykhs they, they didn't start off wanting to be a shaykh, that they took a path of wanting to be nothing, to be nothing, to be nothing. And in Allah emptying the servant in an ocean of nothingness. Then Allah has to bestow upon the person from his Divinely guidance and the oceans of the love of Sayyidina Muhammad then at least they have something from that reality to give to people and someone wanting to, to guide people, direct people and to, to direct people or be authority over people. It's very dangerous in these days and that's the sickness of, of, of everyone. Everyone wants to guide somebody and unfortunately they guide people off the cliff because they themselves are in that direction too and they want to guide people and then they guide them off the cliff. And that's why they say in the last days there'll be so many of those types of guidance where everybody has a YouTube channel, everybody teaching do this, do that. Of which many of them they don't do themselves, they don't know themselves and they don't have a connection to the oceans of guidance. And they may sound good and may sound appealing 
But there's no connection with that and that's the danger that when things become very difficult people will find themselves as if they had fallen off of a mountain connected to nothing. It's like somebody give you a rope and you feel, oh my god I got this rope I'm, 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 I'm listening and obeying but then later on you find out when you really need the rope you pull, pull, pull and the rope is cut, it's actually connected to nothing. And they're standing in the middle of a storm with a rope that connected to nothing. That's the difference. But now when they listen to guidance, you're supposed to connect your heart, get the fires, get the energy, feel the fires and you, you know if you're connected or not. You have to do your practices, you have to do it now before difficulties and storms come. You have to feel the connection, feel the fires, feel how you're tightly on a rope and how you're being guided. Uh, As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam uh, What do we do if we feel hopeless and lonely? InshaAllah the, to, the practices it's an unfortunate state of, of the world now because of many places locked down, things are isolated, there's no more of uh, social gatherings and uh, not to be hopeless but to keep your hope, keep your faith, keep your practices watch the broadcast, communicate uh, with the organization with Help Me at Nur Muhammad, whatever can be done to keep a sense of uh, social contact with the community and to do your practices, feel the energy, feel the, the realities that are dressing upon the soul is important. Yeah. So those are important in the last day especially when people are, are isolated they have to do their practices inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum Do our seven names have any relevance with seven levels of nafs and do they help at each level of the nafs? Do the seven names have anything to do with the seven levels of the uh, nafs? And do they help with the… It's a different reality. Your, your nafs al lawama doesn't have a name. Your, your nafs al amara <laughs> what would that… yeah that name be, yeah. Killer Z. <laughs> From Killer Z Shan to Babaji Zishan would be different. <laughs> no, different different reality. Yeah. The, the, the nafs and the, the knowing of the nafs is of a different reality, to know the nafs and to know its traps. The nafs is, is something that's partnering with shaitan. So we say, La shariq, when they say, La shariq, La shariq, do you really think you're going to make a shariq with Allah Allah has no partner and we're so outside of that reality that it's not even imaginable. But the danger of what Allah is guiding is your nafs and shaitan they're from the same place. They remember each other in the abode of fire. So this nafs is going to partner with shaitan to bring the servant down and they're going to team up so it'll be two to one. And that's why then the nafs and shaitan they're always entrapping the soul and making it to be captive. When the student understands their nafs and how the, the, the bad desires and what shaitan is doing with that bad desire until the nafs can raise, until it's subdued and actually the reality of the soul now is, is dressing the servant and inspiration are coming to the soul. And then from higher up then the realities of the soul and the soul and the Divinely Presence continuously under Allah's dresses and, and blessings. But more defined within that are the seven names. So the name that you have on the, on the dunya plane in which your parents gave to you, if they were inspired then alhamdulillah it's close to that name. If they were not inspired then it is very far off from the name in which Allah intended for you on this earth, inshaAllah. And then that name how its purpose is to reach, for you to reach into your inner reality. 
And then the paradise name at the first level, the paradise name at the second level, all the way up into the Divinely Presence and that name in the Divinely Presence inspiring from the Divinely Presence to send that fires out. And we said before it's like an ocean, once each of these levels are traversed and cut through then from the top all the oceans and flowing of fires and knowledges and realities are dressing all the names and all that is dressing the servant so that they are supported from these realities upon themselves inshaAllah. As Salaamu Ya Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa rahmatullah How do we deal with constant doubts in tafakkur and rabita? Thoughts like, are these lights real or from my nafs? Lights real? <clears throat> yeah, we have talks before on the tafakkur is, is don't focus on lights, that focus on making your connection with the shaykh, don't, don't go for a you know, tour. Don't, don't try to look around and look for light and it's not even tafakkur from your physical eyes. So you don't sit in tafakkur with this straight face and, and closed eyes like this. And that I'm going to try to see through my eyeballs and, and see if I'm seeing like orbs in the room or shadows like running past me, no, no you can to scare yourself. It has nothing to do with that, that vision at all. When you sit in tafakkur your head keep it bent so that the vision is from your heart not from your eyes. So that in your heart your shaykh you know what he looks like and that he's right there in front of you and that you're asking just my heart to be connected and to keep in your presence and I just want to breathe and do my zikr or I'm going to do my awrat now and that please from your, from your light send a light into my heart and then making that connection and everything else that comes is a distraction. Oh, I saw like these, these angels coming, these jubbas coming to me, these lights are coming, these are all distractions. Just keep the connection with the heart and ask that your heart to be filled with energy, to be filled with light and that I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I'm, I'm, I'm nothing. You have to keep negating yourself in every practice that you do, otherwise your nafs will enter into it and, and start to play with you. Oh my god, you saw that this is huge, it's coming, oh my god you got a sword, oh my, they all look this is a throne, they gave you a throne, you got your own chair to sit on. This is all your nafs now entered into, into your psychosis and it become all like a mental, like a, your mind become like a mental Disneyland because it's just going everywhere. So I'm here, oh my god I got a chair, now I'm sitting on the chair, then they give me a throne and then I have now a staff, my staff has this in it and this, <laughs> it won't end. Because you, you were not taught that way, you were taught to negate everything. That when you're sitting, I just want to connect, just fill my heart with light and start. I'm nothing, I'm nothing. And then feel the energy, I just want energy. All I want is energy, fill my heart with energy. If you begin to feel like energy coming and heating and your body shaking from energy, that's all that's important. If you start visualizing and know that's like Disneyland. You have to negate yourself, oh, I'm not interested in that, I'm not interested in that. Because that's what the nafs wants in meditation, nafs wants in meditation visual effects, I want to see things, I want to see things. You want the proof which is in energy, energy has to come in which you become heated, electrified and through that energy you begin all heated up on your body, that's not fake. But imagination, can you imagine that you didn't feel anything, you got no energy. But I, you walked away thinking, yeah, I went to a place, I got a throne, they gave me a staff, they put a crown on my head. Well that, that could be you know, that's all imagination. That's why the, the proof is in the energy and we said you do it enough, you get energy, you get energy. That energy is the Divinely energy that should be controlling that characteristic. Because then the proof of one whom did it right and did it for a long time is that they should have a very soft demeanor, very sort of soft and pleasant loving characteristic. And they've faced many hardships, many uh, oceans of deceit and, and many treacherous realities and still they keep their calmness and, and softness because the khuluq is the, is the proof. If I tell you this rose is amazing, it's just an amazing rose. 
but you squeeze it and it smells like a skunk, that's not a rose. That's somebody maybe painted a cactus. <laughs> Right? I think it's an amazing rose. Come smell this rose and you come back, I peep peep, it's very bad smell. It's probably somebody painted a cactus. It doesn't have the beauty. But the rose, yeah everyone knows what the rose is because when you squeeze it, it's immensely beautiful perfume comes from it. So loving even to the hand that squeezed me. Shaykhana Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Shbadiyyatul Aliyya, Wa Sayyidi Sadatina, Wa Siddiqeena Al-Fatiha.